Hey, you see? How are we all doing? Having a bit of a day of it today with uh, some technical issues. Um, well, running late, I guess, a bit beforehand um, from my usual sort of Friday uh, schedule. Um, OBS won't connect, so I can't, <laughs> I can't stream this on YouTube directly. So I'm going to record it, do what I was going to do, and upload it onto YouTube afterwards. I have a mentoring call to do in about an hour and a half, so I was thinking it would be good to spend maybe an hour or so looking at uh, Tales of the SS4 Alpha. Um, I've not had a chance to do that yet. Thinking that I might want to do it for my personal website, but I've got some plugins that I use. And the last thing that I was aware of with Tales of the SS4. Uh, a bit of an alpha or still wasn't plug in support yet, so I don't think I can do it there right now. But what I did want to try and do instead was maybe try uh, try that with the Drupal Tail and CSS uh, start to get fee that I maintain. Um, I don't look at it that often. Um, there's a few versions of different branches of it, different versions of Tailwind, um, but yeah, it could be a good. Good uh, experiment just to, to see how um, how it how it might work how, or how it works. Um, what's in the the release is stable right now um, in, in the starter kit, obviously, because uh, the the view four itself is stable. But yeah, it could be could be a fun little uh, experiment for now. Um, yeah, so there you go. I'm spending about maybe about an hour or so. Um, this is the starter kit theme in case anybody is not aware. Um, I have looked at it a little bit recently, um, because when I was at Drupal Camp in Ghent, I was looking into the actual Drupal Crawl Starter Kit uh, thing, we even like, officially uh, mark the theme as a Starter Kit theme, and have your theme extend it, for lack of a better word, um, not in the same way that the base themes work, but uh, different to what I was doing before, where I was sort of competing with Git Column, the repo, rename the files themselves. And uh, sort of maintaining it from, from there. Um, so yeah, that was quite interesting. So I did have looked at it fairly recently. Um, I haven't looked at any any table of four stuff for now at all. So let's see how we go. This is going to be interesting, I think, and uh, should be fun. So what I'm using is um, Docker example for Drupal. It's on GitHub. Get a repo. Uh, I've updated it so it should be on Drupal 10.3 now. Uh, double check. Yeah, 10.3.1. So we're right up to date with the, the, the current version of Drupal. And then I've already got uh, that module of our theme uh, um, cloned in the directory with uh, Sarah the theme. And it's, uh, um, it's also in the other reason because it's not 8 or 9 anymore, it's 9, 9 and 10. Or I need to do a bit more maintaining of this module, of this thing. Because I've used a module to <laughs> say the module. Uh, this is what it looks like out of the box. So just in a fresh, fresh install uh, of a Drupal core. So this is what it looks like out of the box. And we've turned this off with theme. And it's intentionally uh, minimal. And I've presented this in, in other videos before. Um, it's, it's not meant to be uh, anything that's too um, complex out of the box, it's going to be something that's there and it gives you, well, the starter kit contributors <laughs> to use some of the scaffolding that you can use and uh, take to, to build your own theme. It's not supposed to be a, a big sort of demo of how, how to use Tailwind, but more of a, a starting point. So yeah, that's, that's what we've got. This is on the, uh, let's see, probably the 5 branch of the, of the theme, which is supposed to be nine. Eight, nine, ten, um, and ten with three, presumably. Um, let's, let's just see. If I've, um, we've, so what I've done is I've cloned into web themes, table CSS. Don't forget that's the theme that we're working with right now. So, so let's have a look what we've got here. Uh, yeah, we've upgraded it onto 3.3.3. Oh, a little while ago, I wonder what was going on. 
three point four one seven, so a little bit behind in terms of Clinton Tech issues issues by that and then have a look. Uh speaking of which I should make an issue for this. Um so I have I have two domains into so this and do it now, but sometimes two maybe not different stream right now. Have a look. And experiment with Tailwind. Still haven't quite. I'm using Home Remote on my keyboard, so we have got um, Control Shift Alt Windows Go on the key uh, on Home Remote, and sometimes I do do that when it's a uh, timing thing. I like sometimes it sort of shows me the wrong types of the wrong letter and stuff. Probably you just tweak it a bit more. Um, so we're just switching it off actually because it's creating some problems. Um, let's see, we'll start this with V5 or I guess the V6. And let's just do that. I just got an issue with an issue number. Did it mean that we were actually up here? It's just really hot on UK this week. Um, I haven't started this week so it's uh, quite warm. So. Stay, stay hydrated. Cool, so let's make a new branch. Shell code minus B and tailwind equal B4. Uh, I like this vision where it's from when I say whether I want to keep it or not. Also, the sun to a different place where it usually is, which probably doesn't help. Cool. cool. Okay, so the way this works is we have the source directory, we have the disk directory. Let's see. And the disk directory has the compiled, generated tail and CSS in it. So, yeah, in a completely different folder. Right, let's try that. Start here, really small. Uh, okay, so, um, bin cip delete this file. That's what I was trying to do, delete this. And now I should have no CSS at all. Everything. Um, maybe we use create a cache or we'll turn off the settings. Let's turn all these things off because we're in development mode. Let's just add thin. We have Docker set up there to fix in this repo. Uh, yeah, thin. It doesn't matter, but no CSS because we just deleted it. <laughs> so um, let's see. Uh, Quite a good blog post here about open sourcing with progress on Tailwind V4. Uh, this was written back in March, so a few months ago. Um, it's the second of August today. I don't know when the podcast is on. <laughs> Between now and then. Um, but yeah, there's quite a lot of different things in, in V4 that I'm wanting to try and play with, um, particularly the configuration in CSS uh, rather than in JavaScript. Um, see how that looks. Um, not, yeah, don't configure your crumbling. That's a really interesting one. I wonder how that's going to work with Drupal's HTML update files. Um, you can put a little plug in or a little CLI. Well, the view job is use kind of a CLI tool. It's running Tailwind next to the set. Probably what we do here. And we've got a V plugin. We don't have V in, in this theme, so we'll try the CLI one and then we'll see what happens. This is the CSS configuration. Not really of interest to look at if you're using CSS variables for things. Let's see here. Uh, Station instructions here. There we go. 
Australia or sort of similar rules, it's, it's still up to that in this rules. You can delete it, you don't want to do that. Uh, okay, you can pause the video. Can you install? Okay, cool. So we can just um, click install with the next option. Let's see whether that's going to work. Let's put it in tab. I think I can keep saving the package JSON file. Let's go back to the logic. Again, we do have make next file, which has Node.js in it. Okay. So maybe we just need to do use make. No comment to UAC for. Just so we've got the ability to run that command. So hopefully this won't take minutes. Log on itself recently. I'm pretty much only using Docker for Google projects because that's the way the database sets it so everything is. Um, everything else, pretty much. Um, just fractals is set up in most of the symphony projects I do with the command line tools. So, do all those in Unix. Now we're going to let's see. We can just trace it with OBS, which isn't connecting. I mean, I tried it a few different times and tried to get it to connect, and then yeah, it just wasn't connecting. It was just really frustrating. It's been a little while since I've last just stood it anyway, so hopefully, uh, could just set up in it. Possibly you can also double go now. I don't think that's going to be a thing to do. So, can't connect it out because the port we're getting is all in everything else. So let's try in if install again. This works now. So we should have my package JSON file. This now has Terraria Pro CSS version 4, Alpha version 4, Alpha 18. That's really cool. Many of these scripts still. Oh, Contemplating the oh, having a run file, we might even have a run file. Let's check. Think I made a batch of run file, but we can we can use this now and see how this works. And then in theory, we're not going to need the Terraria when we compile um, this. Yeah, this now stores <laughs> right out. Uh, anyway, so um, let's delete that and then same as the other one. Delete that as well because it might go into some bug. Cool. Okay, we're back to instructions. So we just did that. Add the plugin into your post CSS configure JS file. Plugins with a full CSS config JS file. Do we have one of those? No. So let's copy this. I've always found the Terraria docs and their instructions to be really good, so I'm quite, quite fairly confident, optimistic that this is going to, <laughs> this is going to work. Um, Finally, optimize imports Terraria in your main CSS file. Okay. The other call is app CSS. I'm assuming that one called it right up. Um, for simplicity, let's just do a bit of copying and pasting the files in here. Um, and just use the same. It's like, it's like both the last CSS is it kind of like that. <laughs> they are pretty inconsistent. Um, copy that out. Have a copy that out. Um, go to slide files. 
Oh, nice. Um, hmm. This is it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, the Peter Parker case is never, it was never charged with CLI. Let's try the CLI. Let's, Let's see. see. Dot R times minus. It's just it's not like sixty. Inputting R after CSS, outputting the disk, and inputting that R. Okay, that's the wrong bit. Let me pull that up for a second. That should be good. We also need to update the margin side again, just because that's now a different column. YAML NT, we're now adding our little three dashes to everything. I don't know how I feel about that either. I like opinionated formatters, but it's also a bit uh, when you move things out of white space, putting things uh, depending on, yeah, I don't know. I like this standard, but a lot of tools I don't, you don't follow exactly the same standard. So, um, this will look like a demo. Um, so a lot of these tiles now we can take this. So hopefully we can go to here and maybe get some stars and some stars. Maybe. Could be good. I might have to do some trashes just to be dangerous. Because I don't want to see that screen. Cool. Awesome. awesome. We're pretty much back where we were, right? Now. That's really, uh, that's really cool. So let's do a commit. So on the twenty four branch, for that operation of our new commit, I'm going to exit it to the end just so it matches. Before. And then yes, to that point, we should also add move the CSS into, into the source folder. And let's call it Hayden CSS as well. Let's 
just them just this getting it as clean as possible and not ruining the glass as well. Um, and the tins, what's that? So I have the dimension. I think we don't. I think we can still have difficult tins here. In fact, in that case, this probably doesn't need to change that much. Because the CSS file is in CSS. So yeah, that's probably going to stay the same. I imagine. Is it going to work with that, I suppose? Stop me every time. It's developing code with the thing every time. It's not one, it's ten. So let's do it again from there. That works. Awesome. Watching and then everything went well good. Cool. So the commands are back to scrap all. I don't need to change the commands other than changing the name of the bin bit file. Just do quick. So let's just add these things to this. And I've included the disk file, like the compiled styles, because I don't want people to just download it and not have to worry about how to compile them. Probably, or if people are using things like CD Testing or Tugboat or any of those sorts of tools where you can quickly spin out projects, that uh, they will probably even support that actually. So, um, there we go. So, we can add a little script that goes to the latest version of this root, uh, root and files uh, bits and uh, commit the changes as we go along. Um, the info file is uh, a base skin change, but there's a separate issue for that of what we're going to make right now. So I will commit these. So, uh, uh, commit this thing. So we're all back at the same place we were at the beginning. Uh, where did it say? Yeah, we did. Didn't yeah, start it. We must have. I'm assuming it's found the tail end. Um, which way did it Then again, I've got no. Um, no stop. Let's see. Let's go. Is that you can't always tell. It's better to go further out. Um, well, I'm going to do the copy paste and then push. So, I don't know if that will make any sense. I'll keep doing it. Um, Right, this is the file, but it's just gonna let's see question mark. There we go. Now it looks good. So when I'm running a clinical run, I'm actually running this file and executing drush inside. So I'm running the drush inside a PHP container, but essentially it's running Docker compose exec PHP. Josh something something, but it's nice that you can yeah, we'll run that and it will always do it. Um, one directory, I think it's two main directories. Yeah, bins, pub. Got. Uh, 
Bad Green Mouse in this case. Yeah, it, it's, it was turn.pcss as for the post.css, um, but now it's turn.css, so it would get it to the new web app before. So let's say and back. Cool. Okay. So just for um, just to sort of confirm, it's this like uh, TD brain. And to the fact, can we make it fail when we want to? So if we did a dist, we have no styles. And then if we run npm uh, run, where it was, it's going to recompile and then it has some sets. Cool. So that is working the way I expect. So what I'd like to do now is start looking at some of that configuration stuff. So and it's great that we don't even need like pro CSS to do this anymore. Or webpack or anything. So it's really good. <clears throat> so yeah, I want to look at this. And this is quite different. So this is where in previous versions of Tailwind like three and below you'd have had a tailwind config.js or a tailwind.js file um, in the early versions um, but now this is done with just CSS and CSS variables which is really interesting so I'm going to make it feel more CSS native once you installed it add it to your project with a regular CSS import so we did that I think jump to debug menu servers so yeah, there is our import. Instead of setting up all the customizations of a JavaScript file, you just use CSS variables. It's my favorite words, just. Uh, okay. Special theme directive tells you to make new utilities and variants based on those variables. This means classes like FreeXL. Okay, cool. Just be able to be able to extend to oh, ask really interesting. Okay, so resample in menu default HTML on a dot to file. So let's think about it like here. Well, well, what can we add? I can just do like red. Do these still work? I guess I'm trying to figure out. Stop it when that is not running a watch or anything. So, player in tackle watch, no, then okay, so that's one. So, should it find it? This is the bit I'm not sure, like, whether it's going to find like the create files that we've got. I don't know somewhere that says like which files support or what to do if it doesn't find it. Travel offline. Must be a way to like override it I'd imagine. Um, npm npx tailwind. Output output watch not a quite done this is what we do we have is this still a what I don't understand is like oh I don't know is whether it's does that class not exist or does it um, does it not is it not finding the trade files I guess that's the, that's the thing I'm not sure of that uh, file source explicit Okay, explicit compilation make it possible to tell us exactly where your templates are. Okay, so maybe that's not there yet. Possible. Hmm. What if we try and 
cricket and set your profile index.html file. But it should find that automatically. Um, you just make it to like the next 100. Sure, it's going to find that. Watch open. I should keep the watch open in a different different tab. Hang on. It's been a busy morning and not completely but I'm not sure I'm doing something new, which is which is always interesting. Um hmm. It's not doing anything there. I mean I'm assuming we get default hellos for this. I think. Can that be? Yes, we get things like this. Yeah, they wouldn't show up if they were there, surely. So yeah, there we go. Why would they not? Why would they not show up? Yeah, they went to have our class. Troubleshooting, troubleshooting live is always fun. Is our class even friendly now? I think I can tell you. My HTML file doesn't match to get yet. Oh, sits there. Strange if things got here. No, oh, looks like it's not actually used. It does. You never know. Container objects, what am I sorted? Some things in it. Let's see. Yeah, it's a fluent hash revenue. This is cool. I, I love that we've got this option here to set these things like they want to files. Oh, cool. There we go. It was just caching Twitch markup. That's fine. So it must be doing that because it's. It's got member classes there, <laughs> it just doesn't have the other ones. Oh cool, okay, so we've got our, presumably, we don't need our index.html hack now, because it's timed for the green class. Okay, click on gas, we need to have our, so if we change that, cool, yep, we're, we're going, awesome. Right. So we don't need to do explicit path binding, which is really, really, really good. And how do we start working on this? Customizing them. Do, do, do. Of course, this this was done in March. March. Um, so now we're August, April, May, June. Yeah, so four months. So um, yeah, things obviously could have moved on since then. Um, okay, so if we do, let's, let's make a copy of some of these after it's done, let's give me this thing, add theme, let's just see what, what, what this does. Put in something else, we can import it, let's add the talks, and then add the theme, makes sense. Um, so that means setting a font family of display, that's the way I'm reading that. It's setting the U3XL breakpoint to be 1920, so presumably overriding an existing one. And then adding in three new colors on top. So the only thing with this I'm not sure about is that with the, the JS file, it's really easy to see which things are new and which things, or yeah, see whether you're extending or not extending because it's a separate section for extending. It's not clear whether there's already a 3XL breakpoint or a neon pink color. Like, are we, are we adding, is this adding or overriding? It's not, it's not completely, uh, completely clear. Hmm. 
So yeah, let's try and uh, it's not on class. Let's try and avoid it in class. Show as an ATM. Let's see if that's this works. Oh, my typing is getting worse. Let's see. Cool. Thank you, man. Let's see what that does. Cool. That looks brilliant. So we've got dark green, black, red, and then cyan colors proper uh, full stack dev <laughs> designer. Cool. Seems yeah, really really nice, really, really, really interesting. Uh so this front one. So I'll take the front display. They don't have it. Assuming they don't have that front, but I don't know. Let's find out. That's cool. Yeah, assuming they don't have this front. Let's see at least whether it shows up. Um, Uh, yeah, so it works. If I had that font, it would it would work. So that's cool. I'm, I'm liking it. So um, yeah, I'm definitely have a bit more of a play with it. So it's not very fifty. I've got a green. Okay. I didn't use it though, but it's like extended in early versions. You can override a whole set of variables by pulling them into this. Okay, interesting. Syntax like color, star, initial, before defining other things. Okay, so you're sort of resetting them here by doing this. This is also cool that it's text, not an image. I'm going to highlight that. Um, and then you find custom ones. Okay. So if we did, if we did that then. So if we change this to be... Like the red color, this should be easy then to see if what we're doing is making any difference. Making the black appear would be easy, easy to see. Cool. Okay, so based on this, if we were to do this, my thinking is the text, uh, the default red color is going to be no longer available, and that we're only going to get the the new colors. That's the way I'm reading that. This is cool, yeah, this is the compiling and, and updating the stuff quickly. Like, and I think that's one of the main things. The thing I was telling before, it's like 10 times faster, or some number of magnitude faster compiling than previous. Not that it was slow before, really. Uh, okay, so do we still have red? No. Okay. Which is what I'm assuming, because if we reset it here, red 500 is not available anymore, but these ones should be. So if I set it to be color green 950, text green 950, got my type in the right hand side, should go like that. Hmm. I'm sort of assuming that we're going to get some green back. Let's see. Let's make sure we've got the class in the right place. Let's see. So code 500. So. Notice that happens usually happening as well. I'm doing that and then we end up with a with, a, with that happening. I think that's again the time between me letting go of the button and me registering as a different key. 
is not proper. Suppose we need to change our keyboard sounds a bit more. Cool, so there's 915, which is this dark green color. Cool. I don't know any colors I'd see that. Um, what have we made? Let's go into group it all. Let's, let's make our own custom color. So we're copying it from the Thailand. Grab that, that one there. So these are all the colors to begin with. Color people. It's just that. So hang on. So what I'm thinking is you should have a new color now called color Drupal available as well as the greys and the greens that we've copied from previously. So, if we do this, text Drupal, Fulpian is going to now be blue. Let's see. It's really, okay, yeah, that's, you. that's good. I really like that. Not a JavaScript file on site, and also when well, it's, uh, it quotes CSS developer from the better phrase, then this would feel a lot more natural and intuitive to me, I think. So it's really cool. Yeah, I like it. Not, not that there's much customization happening or, or in, in this in this theme uh, at all, but definitely for maybe my personal site, um, it's going to be something that I can look into sooner rather than later. Uh, just depends. If I'm using, I've got a couple of custom plugins I've written, so I don't know how well those would pull across and what, what the backend compatibility is like. It will be like between three and four custom plugins, um, particularly because those are written in JavaScript. Um, so I don't know. I'll have to see. But what I haven't done for a while, and this was this chat to someone about this the other, the other day, um, whilst, whilst going through some of my old. Um, repos and things. Uh, some of these sort of early on uh, things that I, that I did on when I rebuilt some of the UIs and things in, in Tailwind. Um, I use these slides in my Tailwind CSS talk call to sort of show the idea that there isn't like one um, Tailwind looking site that like they can look completely different than each other. Um, there's other frameworks like we know that it's using that framework because um, they all look very similar. Um, whereas, you know, that one and then like this one are both built with Tailwind CSS and have some look completely different, but use the same classes. Uh, and those, yeah, this one was PX6, for example, but obviously they're completely different. I haven't done one of these for a while. I did start a long time. I have to remember when it was. Actually, but I did uh, the Bartik one, I did the Acquia one, I've done a, a few, but I was going to redo a part of an SH dashboard. Um, this seemed for me on page for a talk. I've done quite a few. When I've ever gone to, I've been to a conference or a meetup, I've, I've tried to sort of do an example, a relevant example for my, my group. So I've done quite a few of these little rebuilds. I've really got the top in Drupal homepage in, in Tailwind um, before, but. So yeah, maybe I need to do another one of those, and, and I can try using um, Tailwind 4, or maybe I can go back to my site and sort of remove what's already there and, and try it again with something new. That could be an interesting project um, to do, sort of on stream or off stream. Hmm. Very interesting. But yeah, I just like the... There's a lot less to set up here. There's a less dependency. There's still obviously Tailwind CSS to install, so you still need Node uh, to, to do the install. But I don't actually. I'm not using Post CSS now anyway. It's only Tailwind. I like the fact as well they've split the CLI into its own package, and then Tailwind CSS, CSS core is about well, this is the core package. In my, in my opinion, these still work the same, which is good. Um, yeah, 
this is this is I think pretty successful. So yeah, what I'm going to do I think is commit this quickly and then wrap up. So if I've got a mention, I'm going to do it five, and it'd be good to have a bit of time between that and now. Um, and let's have a look and see if we can make make this. Well, not not use these issue keys as much. I'm not going to use issue four for so much. Um, and I'm just yeah, yeah still used to making patches and <laughs> like submitting patch files. But of course you're aware of these things. So I'm going to have a yeah. I've submitted those requests to projects. Just um. I just had the, I just made, just made some tests to um, come back to my path recently with what I've, what I've committed recently. Um, so let's add this as well. And then cherry pick them across. I should know these those changes in order. I don't know if it does. I'm not going to put that now anyway. Presumably, I don't need these. Is there no command? Oh, we don't want that. Sorry. Um, just like that. Just show me how to stream often. Um, that deploying the multimedia the user is. Um, do you need that test file? Still watching. Yes, still watching. I know I'm doing it, and it's uh, reaching out again. <laughs> really, really good again. Got kid check out test. Scare stasis. There we go. Right. Cool. Ah, okay. So I need to find my commit. Scroll back for some reason, so let's just cherry pick it. Get rough mark for the win. Oop, cherry pick. Cherry it's a thing. Issue three. What? What's going on here? Stash those in. Commit stash. Stats. What is going on? Some switch branches in here. Stash. Okay. We'll get there. Okay. There we go. Show 
move it from three five three to four. Turns in a script. Turns this as it's moved. Which means we don't need a little bit of that now. There's that. We did have some base styles in here. Let me copy this across in there. And okay. Absolutely. We don't want those extra ones on there either. So it's fine. We'll clear this up later on because the angle FMT on the angle is just going to happen back in anyway. Um, something else is going to do, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, for sure, yeah. What was it? Post CSS. Okay. NPM. So let's install Post CSS. Composer is composer remove. If we can get rid of it completely, and publish. Then we're going to have to do minimal clean and clear. Cool, so it won the connect. And then let's turn on the navigation four. Let's do one more hit show. Make sure. Um, control K to connect. No. When in doubt, just close the wiki. Yes. That was a not good man for a long time. There. Okay. Just because that was going to annoy me if I push that. Are some configuration settings for YAML FMT, but not um, that installed in them. I'm sure that whether you want those three dashes on top of the YAML file or not, but you need to either set it or put a command running basis. So either I run the same command everywhere in all projects, or you can have a configuration file, which I don't have in this project, and it was quick enough to, uh, to do that anyway. Cool. Okay, so we have this one connect. Um, can view again. Do what with our view search? Got to push. This is real scattering. So <laughs> which we'll have to have to stream after. Again. Which I'm pretty sure I said last time. So cool. Okay, let's see what. I have push access, that's fine. So, do we have commit? Uh, yeah, there we go. That's cool. Okay, my own type is like command to reverse C. Oh, okay, well, I'll do that in, in this live stream. Test it a little bit more first. That's cool. Yeah, I really, uh, really like it as a thing. Uh, I think, of course, it, it, it needs that backwards um, feature parity with the current version, uh, unless it decides to you know, drop something, but it wouldn't drop some of plugin support uh, in the default. Um, but yeah, it looks really interesting. Um, just going to show that now I've got. Exactly what I'm going to show. Uh, CSS. What's that going to show? There's something in this deck that's going to talk to that. Let's see if it comes back to me quickly. 
these examples are talking about is the Bardic one. I will come back to these in a minute as soon as I finish recording. I'm not, I'm not exactly what it is, but yeah, also don't know why I'm doing uh, doing a, a, a talk there uh, earlier this month. Plus, giving another smoking talk. Um, Tannin, I speak about Tannin quite a lot in terms of different different things. So good to be able to sort of bring some of this this learning and this experience uh, as well. So the next time I'm giving the talk, I can't remember what it was I was going to think. <laughs> what I was looking for in there, but so we'll we'll move on. Uh, yeah, giving this giving this talk a good time. Cool. Yeah, I think this this has been productive. I think some other things. I think yeah, maybe there'll be some some other some little UI rebuilds of things to do, or maybe you know, I'll do some other whole kind of personal site in the meantime. But yeah, good to get good to get hands on with Tannin Tannin E four. Um, it's another lethargic thing. It was uh, it's PHP Southwest. One of the user groups that I used to be a co-organizer of. We redid this, I think it was this one, with Tailwind and yeah, this is, this is old school, Tailwind.js before we even had the kind of big um, environment um, six years ago. So, yeah, this is tw August, August 2019. So, this was. Which version was that? Let's see. Okay, I don't think it's the actual. Um, so let's, let's still use it on the site. To be fair. <laughs> uh, let's, let's see which. Uh, page source. Source. Yeah, we'll just look at this. Shows the tailwind version. Can't see it. Yeah, there's that. I'm using tailwind it's like pre 1.0, like 1.4, 1 1.3, like really, really early on. And it's amazing that it's changed a lot in some places and not changed at all in others. Um, yeah, I can still go through and read this and know exactly what it does, which is it's brilliant. So for me, that I like. Tailwind and, and good to like utility classes um, in, in general. Hmm. Oh, cool. I, I'm gonna update. The, no, I'm gonna update the issue that I made and put a bit of uh, I think some comments there about how how this works, what changes, breaking changes there are, like renaming the file, and just document and summarize. What done on, on the stream? Um, yeah, I'll probably probably tack it on for that. I think you know, if anything else can can try it and yeah, give give my give that some uh, bit of presentation. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll to, yeah, I'll stream again pretty soon and so hopefully I'll get my OBS to work this time. Uh, I'll get to work this time and we can uh, do it live. So thanks very much.